Hello everybody and welcome to another Spark of Genius Flesh and Blood production. Super strange, <laughs> we're all in person. We have Rob, we have Yuki, Lee Bender, Canadian National Champion, of course myself, Eric, and we're in Pro Tour. So this is recording this on Friday night. Mm -hmm. We landed, me and Yuki landed Thursday night. It was... We all landed Thursday night. I was there too. We were all there Thursday night. I'm really tired right now. <laughs> it was a mad dash to after the q After seven days. After, uh, uh, yeah. seven, sorry, seven uh, games of... Uh, yeah, we just finished day one. So this is recording this on Friday. We just finished day one. Me and Yuki barely made it to the Q&A. Shout out to OKNY OK Podcast. Oliver, just like hero moment, saving us food. What a bro. Shout mm -hmm. out to OKNY. Yeah, they were Link in the description. They were just like taking away all the food as we were about to arrive because like the the banquet had gone on too long and, and people were getting bored and they wanted to move on to the Q and A. Yeah. And then uh, Oliver really did us a solid. And what what a bro! It was great. It was great. Without further ado, you'll see that we're doing our very first vlog. Neither me, Rob, or anyone is anyone with us is that good at vlogs. So apologies mm -hmm. for that. But uh, we got some B-roll. <laughs> Looks mm -hmm. professional. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so we're gonna do one of these after each day talk a little bit about like how the events went how uh, some of the cool swag there is there and then you'll obviously see all the pictures in between here so without further ado here we do have the giveaway that is occurring here we have given away one spark of genius mask this is the one we have left we are we have given one away so uh the the, the ones in one is they have, they've answered my questions so they've answered the five heroes question right for the heralds and the math but Rob still has both of his, if you can guess the name of his dog. I almost said it, I almost said it out loud, my brain isn't functioning correctly. Like, it's it's, so, it's rare that I'm going to say like my dog instead of like her name. Like, don't, don't, don't even, don't even, my dog. it's a gender neutral dog. So, <laughs> Pro Tour. Everyone's coming in, big ass card out, card art everywhere. And it's mm -hmm. a really big venue. It's like, probably one, probably the biggest venue there was that we've seen, yeah. right? It's yeah. very big. It's quite nice too. It's split out into like a calling section, like a side event section, and like a pro tour section in the back. For the calling, they probably like separated it out like for the calling of the PT. So yeah. as far as the Spark of Genius members, I was playing in the calling. Right. That's a lie. I was playing in the pro tour. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Uh, trying to avoid playing in the calling. Uh, Yuki, our honorary <laughs> Spark of Genius member, rocking the mat. I mean, pretty much part of the team as far as all things are considered for this particular event. Um, and the next one too, now I'm thinking about it. Anyways, point is, myself, Yuki, and Nia, who's taking a shower, hopefully nobody can hear that right now, but the, the sound <laughs> of that shower head is extremely whiny. So we'll see if that comes up later in the video here. But we all decided... After three weeks of grueling testing, and I, do I mean grueling, switching between, what, five different heroes? It was, it was like Starvo, Chain, Prism, Lexi... Prism, Lexi... We went, we went Prism, then Lexi, then Prism, then, then Lexi, back to Lexi. And then Oh My God Chain, question mark, and then Oh My God Starvo, question mark. And then we just stuck with Lexi. And then we ended up sticking with Lexi. We locked it in about like... Like a, two days, three days before maybe? Something like that. Yeah, like two to two, three, three days before we locked in that we're doing Lexi. Then we got the list finalized about two days before, sideboarding choices here and there. All, all of us running the same list here. So we're going to talk a little bit about it. I guess I could start. So I could start. Yeah. A lot of big names there. We have uh, a lot of the American players. A lot of like the higher rated uh, American players were there. They got um, Tarek, Rob Seigel, all repping the Dragon Shield house, all, all those yeah. guys. Um, and then there's a, a fair amount of people from like the Oceania region, New Zealand. Of course, Matt Rogers is here. You got the LSS crew. You got James White. It's pretty cool seeing the panel, mm. Q and A panel with the James White in them. Uh, so that was pretty cool to see. But a lot of big names there. Bringing Lexi, I ended up seeing Chain, Chain. I saw four chains. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say two chains times two. Four yeah. chains. <laughs> four chains. Uh, two star. Oh, four chains and three starvos. Okay, pretty even split that of a uh, top tier meta, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was four chains and three Starvos. So uh, they were very different Starvo lists, though. Like one of them was a completely different list. So I ended up, mm -hmm. I saw two chains, ended up going into, and then one Starvo, it's 3 0, got called to the stream table, uh, saw another Starvo, he flipped Starvo. We have a control package. However, 
It's not as well tested as the regular package. It, it does work. However, we didn't really put as much time as probably we wanted to in it. So mm -hmm. it's a good it's a good package. However, when you flip Starvo, it's very difficult for us to like, oh yeah, it's control for sure, right? So I just like cited in the regular Starvo stuff. Uh, and it was a Tobias Lin from Sweden. He's a quite a good Ulton player. I know that for sure. Uh, and he pretty much just runs like 15 D reacts in Starvo. And he just like, uh, he plays old him. He's playing old him for all intents. But he even said that after the thing. He's I'm just playing old him. It just looks like Starvo. <laughs> and uh, by the time I realize, I see the rampart. So I think he's like regular control. But then he's running um, Fates, Sinks, Red. I think Blue Staunch too. Turn Timber. Like full suite here, mm -hmm. right? All the three blocks. Um, so like I I, I kind of like trying to trip chip in for some damage. But then like the minute he plays the first Fate for scene. I'm like, okay, something's wrong here. <laughs> something, something, something's wrong. Yeah. As far as like, he's definitely going like heavy control. Mm -hmm. And then I'm kind of like, okay, so I have to like start setting up like six card hands, rain razors, like really set up. And then I'm getting there, and then boom, spinal crush. I'm like, okay, sounds good. So that was that was the first loss. Uh, I ended up playing another chain, and then ended up, I think, into an aggressive like a very very casino starvo. I think I was up. 21 to 7 at one point and it was crippling crippling few starvo oaken into starvo spinal and that was the game because oh. that's that's uh dems nice. be the beats and then i played into a chain and didn't get i got like one of my ice arrows which was super unfortunate okay. but that's lexi like we all understood like that yeah. was the deck like you really do need to use all the resources to try to draw the ideal hands in different matchups so i ended up x3 so I made it to day two, so I will be playing tomorrow, but I have to win out completely to top eight. I have to go 5-2 to top 64, and I think 6-1 probably to top 32, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't really know how many people dropped. There were about 175 people that were X3 yeah. that made it to day two. A good chunk of those probably will drop, because a lot of, some of those were like, you know, like Tarek and Rob and yeah. like a, a bunch of players were X3. And they'd rather just have a fresh start. They'd rather just play the calling, right? Mm -hmm. Like have a chance to win the gold full tuning. The last one, right? Uh, I am right. not because I don't really want to play the calling, and I just want to cash. So I'm just gonna try to like cash, which is my main goal here. Uh, but then I think Lexi, I have I had very little reps into Lexi going in, but I think after like 20, 30 reps, the sequencing got a lot more obvious as far as like, oh yeah, you definitely want to like arsenal and land on the third arrow and be able to like load, load, fire. And if that's an endless and they take it, bring it back. And then you like, you always have these tools at your disposal, mm -hmm. golden shot to reload. You don't have the resources, Bolton to reload that floating. You could just use to like fire a sleeper. Like, it's like things like that, that you like pick up as you go. And Lexi becomes more fun when you understand the full suite of it. She has like a crazy suite of cards available. Things like Rain Razor, uh, and uh, Bolton Shot were really, really big in allowing her to like go above as like an aggro, not just like, of course, Yukiya ran the Ice Lexi and uh, Nats, which was a very like, it did damage, but it was a more controller oriented, like mm -hmm. Ice built to counter mm -hmm. the Briars, which did very well. Uh, unfortunately, for Starvo, you can't just sit and wait, otherwise, you just get like yeah. whacked. It d doesn't work that way, right? Yeah. And rain razors is a big a big difference too. Like yeah. now that there's rain razors, we're really leaning into that card. Mm -hmm. And uh, between rain and art of war, the the deck can play like the fuseless ice lexi. Uh, sorry, the fuseless lexi decks that just try to like bolt and bolt and pathing and just kind yep. of go nuts and do five arrows with like plus three on each of them or something. It's like it's like almost like channel mount heroic. Pretty think. much, yeah. Yeah, like build your own channel mount. Yeah. Um, no, but, it's fair. So, so the deck can do that, but it can also play this disruptive Ice Lexi plan. So you kind of tempo them and keep them off balance with your on hits, and then you have a big like twenty-five to thirty-five damage turn. And I, I was finding I was getting one of those turns almost every game. Like it wasn't. No. It's not always going to be like the the top end, but yep. like you know, um, like twenty-five damage minimum, and then I think my my highest was a, was a forty-three damage turn mm. in one game against an Oldham. So yep. the ceiling is very high for the deck. If you that was right that was that was dirty. Yeah, you, yeah. you could do stuff like that. You have three of a kind, just draw three cards. I mean, you set up and you have the razors and ice quakes and whatever you want to play first. And you just you make sure you get off. You don't oopsie daisies and leave an artivore in the arsenal by accident and play three of a kind. You don't want to do that. I did that earlier on. It's really, really quite poor. Um, so that, that was kind of my experience. We did all the Pro Tour people. I don't think they announced this, but they actually got a specific Pro Tour mat. Mm -hmm. And Yuki can show off this beautiful mat. 
that's going for like a bajillion dollars at the moment, yeah. I believe. A participation mat. It is a participation mat that only players from the Pro Tour uh, oh, received. No. Uh, and Part there were the approximately 300-ish, maybe 350-ish players in the Pro Tour. Yeah, yeah. I think it was three, 370. 370. So, was there only 370 of those? Because you can't buy that off a ticket price, mm -hmm. a ticket yeah. combo. Although, does it say just Pro Tour or Pro Tour 1 on it? What does it say? Uh, it says Pro Tour New Jersey. It says Pro New Tour Jersey. New Jersey, so that meaning is that is, like, that is yeah. locked. Yeah. And there's, uh, there's no zones on it, which is kind of cool. That, that like, is that's different, nice right? Touch. Like, it's really that. clean. I like that. Like the art on, yeah. on hard to find though, really, really quite clean. Yeah. Imagine maybe, um, maybe they'll have like the the eye for like uh, the next France tour or something like that. Yeah, I could definitely see them doing more fables. That'd be really cool. Yeah. So that was that. Uh, we were given a water bottle, which again nobody expected, and it's kind of nice. Water enjoy your. Uh, this would be it's a five hundred metal. Yeah, five hundred. Right five hundred. <laughs> and right. um, so it has the flesh and blood logo, and on the other side, this was like really fun. It says that uh, action, drink water. Gain hydration. Oh, again. <laughs> trying to read backwards on the yeah, screen. Yeah, <laughs> trying to read backwards on the camera is not easy. Don't, don't recommend it. But, so, yeah. yeah, those were the PT. Of course, we got the Yorick. Uh, Yorick Yorick promo. The, we got the um, final spring to final the sleeves. Spring. Yep. And that came with uh, any, anyone who played the calling or any of the event packages. Yeah, any also of the packages. got a Yorick and a um, yeah. Yeah, sleeve. Final the sleeves. And then they got the Channel Fireball deck box. Also. That's right, we got a deck box too. Yep. Um, so, that was, that was yeah. kind of my experience. I think. Yuki can tell us about her. So both it's, it's a special day. Both members of Spark of Jesus were on stream. Uh, Yuki was on stream a little bit earlier, so you can go check those That's streams true. out. You guys put on uh, yeah. featured streams. I was round two, and I think Eric was round four. I was round four, and yeah. you were yeah, you were round two. Uh, different results, but that's life. Mm -hmm. And so Yuki can talk a little bit about her her experience, and we can go to the Rob Rob report called the Rob report after that. <laughs> the, we yeah. the Rob report after that. The weather report. The weather report. So, so talk to me about your day yeah. without spoiling the deck tech that we're going to record later. For Not sure. Yet. Later. So, um, so yeah, I went six and one on the day. Uh, fantastic results. Super, super yeah. stoked. Everyone's um, pumped. Yeah, really excited. The deck's been performing really well. Um, just feels like the right choice. Um, I played against a pretty wide range of decks. Uh, the most I've played against is Chain for sure. I had three Chains. I think I had a Lexi, an Aggressive Starvo, an Old Him, and a Dash. And yeah, that's that's all seven rounds. Mm -hmm. um, so a pretty wide range there, and some things that I wasn't really prepared for. Um, I was worried about the Oldham match going in, but it ended up being really okay since I was able to, like, unlike Starvo, where Eric mentioned you don't know what they're on, Old Him, you know exactly what to expect, and we yep. kind of bring in some extra Lightning cards and really like play that game plan of setting up right from the start and like I mentioned you know I had a 43 damage turn that I set up against him that dropped him from 29 all the way down to uh, 9 health um, through his whole hand and all his equipment so um, pretty impressive if you're able to set up those big turns and, and yeah I was really happy with the deck overall my one loss was to um, quite a strong chain player his name escapes me right now I think it was Sam I forgot the last name um, but very well played by him. Uh, the game was somewhat close in life totals, like I did get him down to six, but it felt like he was kind of ahead of all game, and the, the big deciding thing was I didn't really see, um, I didn't see any rain raisers, and I didn't see any three of a kinds, um, I went almost halfway through my deck, so it just felt like I was kind of missing that little bit of power to catch up and, and do that. And, and a lot of the Lexi games kind of go that way. Like sometimes you go quite low on life and then you just have this massive turn that they have to block and then you can just take over the game from there. So yeah, that was my day. Um, yeah, super excited nice. for being Jammy. back. Yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. excited. 6-1, you did a little interview with uh, Alan. Yeah. Alan Hale. Al yep. Yeah. That was, I don't know when that's going up. Did he say? That doesn't matter. Doesn't be on the lookout for that. <laughs> You'll get a bit of a, a bit more insight. Might be on the flesh and blood, like, Might be on the, like, like later on. Yeah, maybe website. later on or like a recap yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I just I know we did an interview, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it was aired during the <laughs> broadcast or it's kind of hard ah, to they tell. might just keep it for. Yeah, they might That's true. It. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so yeah. those those were uh, those were like kind of a pro tour day one. Yeah, I mean, congrats to both of you for making it to day two. I know you were kind of like, if I don't make it, I'll go to the calling, but. I was less competition no, for side me. Side no, events. Side, <laughs> side events. Side events. I'm all about those tickets. Oh, I gotta get those speaking, tickets. Speaking of tickets, draft. that's right, 3,000 tickets for the Alpha Draft. But speaking of tickets also, the uh, ticket booth had a very nice prize that 
a few of us were looking at. It is a an uncut sheet of the 2018 Ira Learn to Play deck. Uh, that is also going for 3,000 tickets. Uh, so far, one of one. I don't think that's ever come out no. before yeah, today. Um, like Tales so, of Modern and stuff like that. But yeah, it's been like the rare like that, foils, yeah. No. commons. Yeah, anyway, so that's a very nice prize that I would be looking to maybe... I mean, 3,000 tickets. 2,000 tickets is a lot to get. I mean, we played in a few events today, got a total of 10 tickets. <laughs> so, but, uh, I mean, it's something to look out for, for sure, if you're looking to get something nice from the prize <laughs> wall. <laughs> we got 10 tickets. <laughs> We're 1 300th of the way. 0.3% of the way to that, to that uncut sheet. Uh, so you gotta start somewhere. Right? You, gotta you start do have to somewhere. start somewhere. I just wish uh, the somewhere a little higher. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll be in the fun. calling tomorrow. These guys will proceed to the uh, day two of the pro yep. tour. I'll have more of an update. I'm playing. Well, I'm playing Starvo. Uh, <laughs> He's got his crayons ready. Yeah, exactly. I got my crayons ready. <laughs> you know, we'll see how it yeah, goes. The load Starvo is doing a lot of people. Yeah. So there were there were really well. 147 ish. Or something like Star that. Forty percent. Forty percent out of the three hundred and seventy. Forty percent of the yeah. men. In case anyone wants to see the chart. And there was a lot of top tables. There, yeah, there, there, there were a lot. The, the top tables were mainly Starvo chain. There were yeah. like some prisms there's here and there. Few, yeah, there's a few smattering. prisms, that, like a smattering of prisms. Yeah. That's and then good news for Olsen. Yuki just rain raising uh, everybody Starvo, like sorry. across yeah. the tables essentially. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm coming for you. <laughs> yeah. Goes yeah, over every, here. I think everyone else was was those three heroes. So. Oh, every no, that that's oh, it. Church, well, no, not no, everyone. Not everyone. That's true. There, there was there were a few wild cards. Stay there for tomorrow. Right? Yeah, there were a few <laughs> wild card regions just popping up there. Yeah, on, on cool. Kano. That's right. That was uh, a. Yeah, we'll there's, there's a seven o Kano, and I think there's seven o okay. five two Kanos as well. I think um, so. Hayden's on five two. Sash's yeah. on five two Kano. And Alexander. Alexander Vore, who's not part of their team. But mm -hmm. he is seven up on Kano. Seven up. Yeah. yeah. He just came in. I think he's a he's a Kano. He's been a Kano main for like forever. I think so. I think that makes a whole lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, Kano is like an interesting. I don't want to go too into it, but it's very very like it makes a whole lot of sense when no one runs any null room. Yeah, exactly. You no, run no, zero one null. Sideboards are a little skimpy now in the null room. <laughs> that plus like nobody has reps in the Kano. Who has reps in the Kano? Like it, it's yeah. it's very like when you have so many heroes to because because like they like smash the meta wide open you yeah. have like five different decks you need to like know really well or somewhat well right. like two starvo builds you yeah. have to like consider both Kano can really fit through the cracks mm -hmm. on this yeah, one, it, I think. It, yeah like and they're also different like yeah like prison needs you to like be able to manage your auras and maybe have some poppers starvo yeah. you need the d-reacts and yeah. then like this <laughs> yeah. or sorry chain for chain needs, um i don't know something to deal um, with his yeah. Yeah. husk and crazy <laughs> aggression so yeah. No, yeah, you're pulled in a lot of directions, and it's hard to account for everything. Kano's like, it's and my Kano. time to shine. <laughs> no, it's true. Uh, Kano might end up winning the whole thing. Kano is, yeah. like, there's there's multiple, there were seven Kanos, and two of them are in really good spots. So it's, mm. it's already got a really good rate. Three of them. So three good, of them. Good Almost 50% like, could probably, like, yeah. potentially make top eight, which is kind of mind-blowing mm -hmm. when you think about it. I don't um, think anybody would have no, predicted no, that. No, that is yeah. a dark horse. Nobody put on their, their cheat sheet here. I forget um, what my dark horse was. Lexi. Yeah. It was Lexi. Okay. Yeah, because oh, of good. Yuki. There we go, yeah. <laughs> I'm just You're like, what, who's, your, who's your dark horse? <laughs> La Yuki. La, yeah, Yuki. La Yuki. Did you put Kano as your dark horse? No, I put Dash, because you, you would be most put Lexi. I'm like, <laughs> I guess I have to pick something else, even though I was going to pick Lexi. But yeah, yeah. Um, that's totally fair. They got uh, a lot of like kind of more content creator personalities. They got Rudy. From yeah. Alpha Investments, they got Steve Argyle. They got Steve Argyle. Signing they got cards and playing. What's sure his name? Artist. He's Italian. Fre Frederico. He's, oh, he's the he's yeah, the yeah, Ice Frederico. Yeah, it's Icelander yeah. and um, Lexi. No, maybe it's Lexi. I think it's Lexi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Icelander. But Steve Argyle is, is Icelander. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. At least yeah. the. Yeah, he's Viscera too, Amber right? Viscera. He did Viscera. Yeah, he did Viscera. Steve Argyle's Viscera. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, there was a lot of that. A lot of tickets. A lot of fun stuff. That's pretty much it for the first day. Anyway, did we miss anything? I don't think so. We'll have more to cover by tomorrow. More to cover. This is going to be like a like everything's going to be edited and smushed together in one video by our pal Rob here from Spark of Genius, of course. <laughs> and with that, appreciate everyone for uh, watching the first part here. Tuning into day one. Tuning into day one. See everybody tomorrow with some more news with our last member, Spark of Genius, who's not on the couch, but he's going to make. <laughs> quite the name for himself and prove everybody that he's not a katsu one trick so stay tuned
Hello everybody. We're back. Sound probably sounds awful, but that's fine. We're still recording. Myself, Eric, co-creator, co-commentator, co-caster, co-compatriot, Rob over yes. here. Hi. Uh, <laughs> we're, kind of, we're exhausted. Uh, recording this in, in batches here, kind of tying, up, tying it all together mm -hmm. with, uh, with, of course, Yuki and, and Nia's yeah. uh, performance from day two. So, so we just finished uh, the PT's over. PT's over this Sunday. Is the, the third day. Yeah. 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 We're so back we, didn't, here. we didn't do a recap for so for, for day one separately. So we're combining sorry, we did day one, we didn't do day two, so we're combining day two and three. Yeah. See so me and Rob and then I'll moderate with uh Yeah. UK we thought we were doing day two, but then like it was a bit late. Like, we'll just wrap a bit it late? They're playing Commander. That's what they're doing. Um, <laughs> don't don't so, tell them that. <laughs> cut it out later. <laughs> um so essentially day two uh, for my for myself, starting off, it was a pretty crazy event. Uh, so you were still in the pro tour at this point. Yeah, day, day two, two I was still in the pro tour. tour. I, I went in uh, X three because I just punt. I didn't punt. Uh, I was four one at one point. I oh, what was your record going in again? It was five two? No, four three. Four three. Sorry. Okay. So I went in. Uh, I was on stream game four. So that's three zero going into round four. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, just got stuck into a heavily controlled Starbo. Great player. He's a good player. Mm -hmm. uh, I just didn't side in control for control, and so I just lost. I didn't have enough pressure. Right, right. Just, you know, it is what it is. Um, and then I ended up getting casino rolled later on. I think I was on table seven or eight, or I was like one of those tables. I was 4 1 at that point. Right. Right. I was doing pretty good. My seating was really good. Mm -hmm. And I was up like 20 something to seven and just, I talked about it a little bit later. So anyways, I, I went into, I talked about it a little bit earlier. I went in X3, yeah, this was before. Went in X3, uh, played into, so my day two, I actually faced a couple prisms, uh, Starbills and Chains. So like stale Starbills and Chains, mm -hmm. oh my. But uh, we had a little bit of prisms in the mix. So early on uh, game one, so game so round round eight my first game of that day it was against a uh, a Starvo I believe mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a control star no it was a casino Starvo I think okay control or casino I think it was I think it was casino don't quote me on that mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't control because now I'm remembering like some of the crazy stuff uh, it, it was one of those it was one of those high roll games mm -hmm. um, essentially it was just like I did what I could I got them fairly low but. And then up happening is I start I whiffed a three of a kind just straight up, uh, whiffed. Uh, I had tempo going in, yeah. so that, which is what the deck was supposed to do. I had tempo. I had all the arrows. Three of a kind needed like one arrow to kind of keep going with the tempo. I see encounter amulet winter's bite. <laughs> I'm like, it's not what you want to see when you play three of a kind. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, I <laughs> I had a, I had remorse, remorseless out and one arrow. So what I did is I. I Arsenal, I essentially Voltaire to set up an arrow, knowing I have three of a kind. So when I do three of a kind, I just need another arrow to have like a two two arrow turn, and I'm drawing three ice. So I only had Path and Helix in the Arsenal. Yeah. That's just how it goes. And then Starvo just kind of shrunk it off. So I, I kind of lost tempo in there. I couldn't really recover. That's Starvo. Uh, I won my mm -hmm. next two. Uh, one chain. Uh, one, another uh, Casino Starvo, which I played. Um, pretty much stuck to the game plan. Just got some good arrow fatigue shots, sleep darts. Did work. You'll see the deck tech that we released a little bit later. They did its job. Able to kind of control it uh, from the beginning. Played into a chain player, um, uh, Sebastian from the Card Guys. Mm. So pretty good chain player. Very good chain player. Uh, top was runner up in the Calling Las Vegas. Uh, extremely good nice. chain player. Uh, very. It was the first chain player I've seen uh, using. I think he used the creepers. He played very like interesting sequences. I think uh, that I haven't okay. seen yet in Chain yeah. to try to get around my taxes and <laughs> my taxes, all, all like the chillings and everything. So he just bought the creepers before the uh, first uh, fight came. Yeah, he tried to like go faster by using creepers earlier, which is not something I, I saw. Okay. Like, he used creepers like turn three or turn or, like really really early. Oh, okay, which, okay. Every other chain like saved it to like the very very end. Or right, like right. that. He's very liberal in his usage. <laughs> he was very liberal in his usage. Um, <laughs> And it was it was working out decently. I think I just got too much ice onto him, so I loaded up for like remorseless. I loaded frostlock, mm. um, got like some really good uh, remorseless hits with like triple arrows. I was able to get his husk uh, a little bit later, like to, to force through the husk, um, snapping and bullseye. I was pretty liberal with the bullseye to 
try to put that one more arrow pressure because he yeah. wanted to keep his hand. Yeah. Yeah. So I like loaded in and fired to make sure, which is a little bit risky versus chain because that's your only arcane barrier. So like dying to inverts and right, stuff that, is, that's is true. an issue. <laughs> yeah. Um, at that point, Where's I think that I just up? needed, yeah, I think, I think I just needed pressure that time. It's always kind of weird when and when not to use the bullseye. So I yeah. used it, I was 2-1. I was rolling into, I think I faced another chain. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe his name is Brody, I believe. Uh, don't call me on that. Uh, also a very, very good chain player. I think I remember seeing him on like fairly high tables even rounds after. Mm. So I think he was, yeah, uh, I think he did fairly well. Either way, he was also a very good chain player. Um, definitely had a fairly fast deck. He had kind of this one big turn at the end. I, I didn't draw my ice arrows. I just, I straight up didn't draw them. Like in chain, I didn't draw my tax arrows. I had like one or two sleep darts. Uh, but all my arrows were like pathing helixes, endless arrows, which were just pure damage. Not much disruption there, yeah. No, no disruption. He just kind <laughs> of he just kind of took it and came back. I couldn't really block. Like blocking in Lexi versus Chain is just very very difficult because you just come back to nothing. And I was like, well, I don't even have a tax arrow, and I didn't get one until very very late in the game. There's nothing I can really do. Mm. It's not very common that it happens because you run full chillings, full blizzard bolts, uh, frost locks. I just, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, he's a good player. Um, so now I'm 2-2, two, two, and I'm, I'm pretty much out of the money for top 32. You've got so now X5 at this now. point. Yeah, okay, X5, X5 now. Oh, yeah. uh, at this point, I'm kind of like a bit dejected. Uh, yeah. It's not really... I, I don't know. There's, there's not too much. Like, top you're, 64 you're, you're is fine. Out of I'm, not, I'm not out of ca- Yeah, I'm out of 32 for sure at X5. Uh, I, didn't, I think I need to X4 to, ca- uh, to top 32, because uh, mm-hmm. uh, Yuki, Yuki did it with uh, being 9 Five, I believe. Nine her, five, yeah. Yeah, but, but her, her earlier record, her earlier so record impressive. was better for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, if I lost one more, I was kind of like gone out of cash. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I faced Prism, uh, and this was at this was yeah this this was the next one. I was I think I was six five at this point, something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Um, faced yeah. Prism. Yeah, six four, six five, something like that. Six five, I think. Um, right. So you had like, two more games after this, basically. Yeah, three more games. I might have, I might have got the math wrong there, but okay. I, I faced two prisms essentially. The first prism, uh, nice guy, ab- sacked the absolute living nuts out of me. <laughs> Just got a whole Hyrule. ton of arrows. Uh, he got all three haze bendings out within four turns. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and that's the one that creates an, uh, a spectral. And then he got a parable out like right after. So when I had to have mm. a big turn, I had to hit the parable. Yeah, yeah. He creates three spectrals. Blah blah blah. He was going really well. He was at like four. I was at seven. So I was still putting out with the with the sideboard. I was still putting out a whole bunch of damage. Right. Uh, the issue came when he arc lighted exactly like he didn't have from Arsenal like on a druid blind. He arc lighted yeah. me. Okay, I'll set up another turn. It's fine. I'll hit the arc light. Go get some spectrals. That's fine. Then the turn after that, I tried to bull because I bullseye the turn before to get him to like three or four, and then finish off the game because I was pretty close. Hmm. Uh, and then he mercifuls the turn right after and draw like drawing off merciful off the top. I think it was the last one or the second last one draws it off the top, and I'm like, well, I have no bullseye, so I can't block the arcane. Yeah. So that was it. Um, that was a prism. So with that, I was pretty much out of money. I was X6 at that point. Yeah. Um, face another prism, another chain, I think. Mm. Uh, I, don't, I don't particularly remember. I think it was like a lost one, 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 something along those lines. Um, similar strat uh, to both, but end of the day, didn't cash, which is fine, because uh, I was out of top 64 after that second loss, pretty much. Mm. Uh, third loss, sorry. Yeah, after the third loss, oh, after, after the, the after this, because when you're when you're six losses in that kind of event, you're you're kind of you know, really going to be in the money most of the times, mm-hmm. which is fine. Um, yeah, pretty pretty. The, the deck performed. I guess. The deck performed really well. Honestly, yeah. Yuki will like we'll talk about a little bit later, like how right. Yuki did. Uh, our our both of our day twos were kind of like we got off to like good starts, but our day twos were kind of mirrored with a mm. bit of like unluckiness on our part. Like she also had some three of a kind of issues and like. Starvo was doing Starvo thing. Thank God he's not a good yeah, thing. But we'll, we'll hear from her later. We'll hear from her later. But that was my date. that was my day two. I wasn't. Awesome. My only goal was really to day two. Um, as dumb as it sounds, like I was doing quite well day one. Uh, but I have mm-hmm. twenty five or so reps on the Lexi list. Uh, very little Lexi experience. Not a hero I've played a lot of. It's kind of dumb. I say that, and I'm bringing Lexi to the Pro Tour for all things. But, <laughs> but it's just like well. 
I was gonna bring Prism, but but you were kind of doing fine. it with with Yuki and our testing or our testing party. Yeah, party yeah. I was doing so it like as a team it's kind, kind of thing. Fun. Yeah, you know, like, you, you uh, all bring the same deck. See how far you can go with it. Yeah, um, pretty much. I, I liked the deck, so I thought I'd bring it. I, I didn't have high expectations. It wasn't a deck I was particularly like, oh yeah, I played like 400 reps in this deck. I'm just right. gonna crush everyone, right? Right. Um, and at least she had practicing on Lexi already. Yeah, her her insight was invaluable. If she wasn't a Lexi player. I would not have brought Lexi. 100% I would have just brought Prism. And right. that's it. It's the deck that I'm, I'm fairly comfortable on Prism. Even Chain, for that matter. Right. But right. Uh, that was fine. I was, I was still fine with it. Like, I, I didn't really expect anything more than that. And then... Okay. How'd, was... you, how'd you top off day three, then? <laughs> Side events. Side oh, events. Slept in. Yeah. Oh, Sle my God. Sleeping in until I had, about, I had, like, five so... hours of sleep between two days. Maybe, yeah, like, like yeah. five, six uh, hours. Day three was, like, your vacation day. Day three was vacation. Day two... Your day to do touristy stuff. Yeah, I have, I have to say, for someone... Pro tours, right? Because <laughs> this is my first major fab event outside of Nationals. Mm -hmm. This is the only big multi-day event I've done for fab. 14 rounds total. It is a slog. Like eating, drinking, all that stuff, right? Like it's so important. Day two, I was wiped. Like, yeah. I was after like round nine or 10, my brain was not functioning. <laughs> day one, I kind of like had so much adrenaline that I kind of powered through it. But day two was a mess, especially in the prism games with where there was a lot to deal with on the board. Like yeah, it was, it was, I, I was definitely suffering mental fatigue in those. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not like making excuses or anything. I'm just being realistic. Like, just like you need more practice in these long term events. You need events. A, it, it, it's, events. It's a thing. Like playing a bunch of callings, playing like it really does help. Yeah. Um, making sure you have snacks between snacks, rounds. hydration. Just getting food between rounds uh, wasn't that easy if you were going like almost no, the time. No, 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 it was really, and, and the thing was uh, like there's a lot, there were decks that were trying to fatigue me and it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> like it was a, the, the control star, the, I faced another control star that was my other loss, it was my mm -hmm. last game of the day, okay. day two. Uh, he wasn't like control specific, but he was running Rampart, he was running Staunch, I think he had Sinks or something like that. The typical kind of more mid-rangey, like maybe 60 react kind of, kind of build. Yep, um, um, but it wasn't casino, so it was a little bit more difficult. Uh, that being said, it was good. Uh, yeah. Slept in a bit, did a little, little uh, draft, not draft, sealed. We did a sealed, sealed, sealed event two, together. We did daily double. <laughs> yeah. uh, my deck was absolute garbage. I think a 2 2 or something like that. Uh, Rob's deck was amazing. He just. I don't know what uh, happened there. Misplay one of them, and the other one I play a face against a Brian. I'll talk about my side right now, actually, since you're kind of giving it up. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Right. And then we, we kind yeah. of watched the ceremonies. We got some stuff. I got artist proof Lexi. Pulled some Line, stuff. Lined up for Steve Argyle. That was fun. I lasted for like two hours for each of the artist proofs. Yeah. So that was fun. <laughs> Awesome. So I mean, for, so for the for those of you who watched part one of this update, yeah, Rob uh, didn't talk a lot during that. He was, I, he was I outside was, event duty. Basically, his day three was kind of like my day one, where I was doing side events. I was kind of doing the touristy stuff, lining up for you know autographs and stuff. Because uh, I wasn't in the pro tour main event, but I did play in the calling. So day two, I started up playing in the calling nine a.m. I did bring Control Starvo. Well, I would say more mid range, not Casino, the the version that does run the D reacts. Uh, Pretty much into every matchup. Disables. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some of the, yeah. the non-colorful cards, the Guardian specific cards. So um, I basically started out going, I believe it was 2-0. I faced off against the Katsu, uh, who I won, I think, in five rounds, even less. Five uh, turns? Yeah, no, the game ended in 10 minutes. Wow. I just got super lucky at Oaken Molded. I think it was like Oaken crippling into like a non-fuse also, also crippling. Really? No, so crippling was not star mode, okay. but then I think I... Ended it off with like a oak and old fuse, I think. So anyway, it was four back to back attacks. He got six damage on me all game, and it was kind of gross. I I apologized <laughs> after in, that. In game. Typical Canadian fashion, he apologized right after. Hey, you know, playing Starvo, I feel bad winning. It feels fine. I don't mind losing as much, but when I win on those terms, it always feels like I gotta apologize to my opponent. The guy actually got really mad and just walked off after that. So if you're watching, I'm very sorry. Uh, so I started off pretty strong, 2-0. I then lost round 3. Uh, this was into the mirror. So traditionally I don't do very well into mirrors, I think. So and it was casino style, so I, I think he just kind of went much faster. And he was able to, I think he ran Art of Wars as well in that, in that version of the deck. So he was able to cycle much quicker through his cards. Uh, for me, I'm just kind of crowning, using my D-Reacts to get, to get over um, his damage. So anyway, he, he got the win on me. And then I ended up going, uh, I think I won the next match, it was against Chain. So I actually won, I had three Chains that day. I actually ended up beating all of them through fatigue. Uh, 
surprisingly Spectus. enough, there was one guy I faced, I think it might have been that that round four, where uh, he had, I think, four bounding demigods in his banish zone, but the turn where he had to go off, he drew no non-attack action cards, so he was not able to get them out of banish. He actually died to his own blood debt. It wasn't a fatigue. He died to blood debt that round. I think he had, like, upward of eight cards in banish zone at some point, and he just couldn't wow. play and, like, many of them. That was brutal. So anyway, he was banishing well, but just couldn't get them out. Um, so I was able to cl come clean, come with a clean victory off of that guy. Uh, then I came, I think, uh, as we got, went through the day, I went to 5-1, feeling really good about myself. Um, you know, I didn't play much, I'll be honest, I didn't play much on the deck. But I picked up the deck a week like before Pro games. Tour. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> maybe even less than I had that. to force you to play, like, half of those. <laughs> I only got the deck because Eric wanted to play into Star Wars, and I started playing. I was like, this is kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> bingo, bingo, bingo. <laughs> um, with the little, little practice I had, uh, playing a deck that wasn't as hard to play was in my favor, really. So I was 5-1, and in the calling day one, all you needed to do was to be X2 in order to go to day two. Which, which there were over 800 players in the calling, mm -hmm. meaning X2 wasn't easy. No, uh, that would have been, after eight rounds, it would have been 6-2 minimum to get through in day two. So I was now 5-1, um, and then I ended up losing the next game. I think it was to the mirror, so I actually ended up losing only to the mirror that whole day. Uh, up until this point, and I think it was always to Casino. So um, I kind of play, playing into the. I, I think I didn't side properly. Also, I think I might have left my Spinal Crushes in there, where I probably should have taken them out because they're not as good into the mirror because the go again doesn't matter as much. So not, yet, not unless they like Starvo. Starvo. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah. Um, I probably, in hindsight, would have removed the Crippling Crushes from my deck. Uh, so going into the final match of the game. I'm 5-2 at this point. I needed this match to win. I needed to win this match to be able to go to day 2. My opponent obviously in the same boat as I am. I, I see my opponent, he flips over Starvo. So I'm like, crap, I've already lost two of the mirror matches into Starvo. And I've been done well against all the chains, against Katsu, everything else i played against. Now I'm like, crap, I'm going to lose this game. <laughs> but, uh, man, this guy was so fun. When we started the game, he took out a box of Crayola crayons and some construction paper. <laughs> And I was like, here, you can use this to calculate your life total. So, uh, the, obviously, playing on the meme of, like, crayons and Starvo, uh, it was really fun. Really, really pleasant guy. He actually had the same hotel as us. We chatted afterwards. Um, but that match, I remember, was just an absolute bonk fest with the hammer. We had nothing going forward. Maybe some Starvos on, like, Evergreens, maybe, for, like, a 9 Dominate, for, like, no on hit, whatever. But it was basically, we were just chipping each other away down to, like, 12 health. And it just came down to whoever could get their oak and old fused first and then, you know, take the advantage and the lead from there. So I ended up getting mine first. Uh, thank goodness he didn't have a D react to counter it. And then it just came down to just finishing the game off. I had the tempo at that point. He didn't have a hand. So I, I inched out with the win. 6-2 uh, on Starvo. I was able to go to day two, which uh, my expectation really was. I'm just going to scrub out after 0-3, to be honest. I was like, I want to play this for fun, I'll go back to side events, but I ended up going to day two, and I was very happy about that. I exceeded my expectations by a lot, and uh, yeah, and, but I mean, going into day two, obviously, I did not make top eight in the calling if you're watching this now, so. Uh, <laughs> Spoiler <laughs> alert, Roth is not a top eight calling champion. I am not. I ended up scrubbing out day two. I lost the first two games of the day, both into the mid, no, sorry, I'm wrong. First game into the mirror, uh, very strong player. Again, it was a bonk fest. We got down each other down to like 13, 14 health. And then he just got his Oaken first. He Volthavened me in, into Oaken Ult for 15 damage. So at that point, I just kind of lost that game. I wasn't super um, down at that point because I was like, okay, I can afford one loss. It's not so bad. I won't top eight, but I can maybe I can cash a top three too. The next game I played was into a chain. And basically the game, I was doing very well. I was fatiguing really well. But... Um, I made a, a very concrete misplay in when I decided to use my stalagmite to block out chain. Stalagmite's very tricky in that if you don't use it right, you, you're much better off using the rampart shield because the stalagmite, although it does block for three overall, you can get much more block out of your um, your rampart head, especially against chain because they're hitting every turn and you can, yeah. you know, they don't they do break the chain if they use their you know their shackle ability, so you, maybe you can get it twice per turn. Not attack shackles, but not attacks as well, of course, yeah. But um, it, it ended up that I used the stalagmite to block on 
the second to last turn before he had his big, big turn. And I didn't realize his attack didn't have go again. So I used it giving the frostbite, noticing that he still had enough resources to reset me uh, without the frostbite. So I was like, okay, I'll give him a frostbite. He can't reset me. They didn't have go again. So I totally misplayed that. If I had it for the final round, I would have won because he had exactly enough damage to kill me with Ursa. He got Ursa off, exactly six damage. He decked out. Uh, and so the one damage difference would have made it, you know, make, made, or bring, made or broke that game. So I was a bit sad about my misplay, I think. Whenever I am sad, it's mostly because I misplay. It's not really, I'm not really mad at RNG or anything. It's just like if I misplay, that's when I'm the most upset about my games. Yeah. So, I mean, understandably, I guess most people are kind of like that. Um, but anyway, that ended up, I, I scrubbed out. I, I, I left the calling after that. I joined Eric and we played some of the uh, sealed events. Side of us. Uh, we, got, we got some nice tickets that we spent on some booster packs, opened those together. So Did a box battle. We had a box battle. Box I, <laughs> we bought an Everfest box. Awful. Remember 12 that, packs each. Remember that video you, the viewer, watched when me and Rob opened a box of Everfest and it was awful? Neither do yeah no you don't because it was we, so bad. We used CCG low to calculate each of our uh, each of our halves. It was my like, mine was like his was like twelve dollars and seventy five cents. V of thirty three dollars. I won the box battle by thirty cents or something. Thirty three dollars. I got some cold foil talismans. Can't, can't Why? Complain about that. <laughs> anyway, that was that was our day three. Uh, we're here now recording on day three. Obviously after yep. so it's about midnight right now, so we're about to go to bed. My plane's at you know 10 in the morning so i gotta yep. get up early but um yeah i mean that, that was pretty much it that was, this is a fun event it it, was fun. It, it, I, I will say it was a little a little rant like a little all over the place like the organization was mm -hmm. i think it could have been a little bit better mm -hmm. uh there were a lot of people to be fair i think the booth there weren't as many booths as i thought like like vendor booth and yeah. like artist booth there were only two artist booths which was fine but like steve argyle and Federico. They, they had big names I was, they, they were, the content were was there. Like I think yeah. they very like it was very meaty, you know, like it was good. What they had was good. The lines were very it's long. It's just that the lines were long. I wish they had maybe more booths to spread people out exactly. more. Exactly. If they had more booths for people to go to to get signings, I think it would have been a little mm. bit more. The problem is you got eight hundred people, the calling, you have Pro Tour, you have side events, you have Battle Hardening, you have all these events, it's, it's tough to actually fit everybody in one venue. The venue That's was true quite too. large. That's true too. To be yeah. fair. I, I did like the, the choice of venue was nice. Um <laughs> That being said, I liked it. I we uh, I probably won't be heading off to PT uh, France. France, probably, um, probably not. Probably it's, not it's a little either. bit too expensive. I I probably qualify off Boomer XP. You you say. do qualify. Yeah, I think yeah. But I don't, I, I, I don't qualify. Even obviously. though even though that would be like my format, like limited CC. Well, limited more more so limited than CC. But like combined format is much better for me than a CC format. So mm. that would be probably the one I'm more interested in. But I, I'm 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 not gonna spend fifteen hundred bucks to go. I mean, it, it's, it's a little too close as well for me. Yeah. Uh, if it was like maybe like a and a half a year, I'd consider it. But there's a lot of traveling this year because of the OP program, which is like well, right? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to go to. We're gonna probably we, have we some stuff. Have yeah. events in Canada, even within maybe. yeah even within Canada maybe uh, nationals. for nationals we'll be traveling as well so yeah yeah I mean eventually we'll go to Europe for the events uh, but Worlds will apparently be in the states I think that was confirmed that was a, that was a big announcement so yeah. we'll be one of that very likely um, but yeah I mean overall this event was really fun I have no complaints at all except for my back was killing me holy shit um, it carrying was the bad. background yeah. You really got a weird really mobility scooter. I think Benson recommended that. Get a little, a little, <laughs> he said that's the play. A little waiting in Artist play. Alley, though. That's the Roll play. it on mobility scooter, you're good to go. Apparently. Um, but yeah. Appreciate everyone for watching. Uh, we understand that the sound quality will be hot garbage. We're using my phone We're to using record. a phone. That's just how it is. Should have brought a mic. Sorry. Should have brought a mic. Didn't. Sorry. Uh, we'll have, we'll we'll have one next time. Yeah, we'll think of it next time. We got a little, we got a little stand. We got the tripod and everything. So hopefully that's, that's we do have the a tripod. Lighting. It we is... got the lighting proper. <laughs> it was really nice seeing all the the news, the LSS, like James White, and uh, all the other like people from mm. all across the world that nobody ever is ever sees at these events, right? Hundred percent. Really love that. With that, hopefully everybody appreciated the uh, little recap video on the blog. Do you like it? Do you like our B roll. You think we're bad at it? We probably are. Probably bad let, at it. Let us know. I don't know. We, we don't plan on doing very many of these, so <laughs> you know it is what it is. We'll but learn. For, for bear bear wants, with us, please. <laughs> bear with us. For everyone who liked the recap, uh, we appreciate it. Appreciate you, the viewers, the new subs, old subs, everybody. And with that, 
from wherever you're watching this in the world. Have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Bye for now. Hey everyone, here we are back in Canada from the Pro Tour. Um, by now you probably would have seen Eric and I's update on our day two and day three of the Pro Tour slash calling. Um, Eric unfortunately couldn't be with us for this part due to a very big flight delay. But um, I do have me with me uh, Yuki again. So hi Yuki, <laughs> nice to have you back. Uh, and a brand new face to the channel actually, but no stranger to any of us here. Um, this is someone who's been with us since the beginning and has been very instrumental in testing the Lexi deck that Yuki and Eric have put together uh, for the Pro Tour slash The Calling. So uh, this is Nia. Hello, Nia. Um, friend of the channel for a while and also friend in real life, or at least he hopes. I hope he sees it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, let's, let's kind of jump right into it. Let's talk about your day two and day threes of the Pro Tour event. Uh, I guess, Yuki, we can start off with you. Yeah, so um, going into day two, I was feeling great. I was six and one, which is like about as good as it can be. Um, my first round of day two, so round eight, was actually on camera. I played against, uh, he told me how to pronounce his name. I believe it's Massier, a um, player from Poland who is very, very strong. Um, he actually ended up being in top eight. He was on Starvo. So, that, so that was a future match that you could check out. Um, pretty interesting game. I think it was like very back and forth. He didn't get that many Starvo fuses, but he did have like very timely disruption. And it was like a little bit more of like a slow mid rangey game than than most games. So so that was quite an interesting matchup. And um, yeah, it didn't play out the way that a lot of the Starvo games play out where they're super swingy. It was kind of like a lot of like trading small damage and blocking. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up winning that game. After that, I played against Prism, who was Mike C from, uh, he's like a fellow Canadian from Ontario. Uh, he was also eight and one at this point. So it was, or sorry, seven and one at this point. So it was quite an important matchup. Um, I ended up just kind of rushing him down, going pretty wide, being pretty aggressive. He wasn't able to really get auras established early. He was drawing more heralds and I had like fatigue shots and taxing effects. And then in the late game, he ended up drawing auras um, when he was quite low and, and wasn't able to block. So um, he did get me fairly low in life totals, but it felt like I was always kind of ahead. And that put me up to uh, eight and one. So again, just feeling super good about my spot. Um, after that, I played against Nick Butcher on Starvo. Um, I drew very, very well in that game. I was taxing him most of the time and then had two uh, very big turns. Um, kind of like three of a kind rain razors kind of turns where I got him very, very low, very fast. Um, he did make a bit of a comeback at one point when he was able to uh, chain a fused Oaken into a fused Spinal. Um, but after that, I, I think he might have even fused again, but it was just um, it was just like an earth card. It wasn't, mm -hmm. there was no on hit attached. And, and then I was able to swing back and, and force him to block because I think he was like sub 10, like maybe around like eight life or so. Um, so I ended up picking up that match against Nick. Uh, so I was at nine and one, feeling great. Uh, played against another Starvo, and the the game plan was going like pretty much exactly as I would plan. But I never ended up seeing any of those like Rain Razors, three of a kind, Art of Wars, um, despite going through almost half my deck. And it just felt like I wasn't quite able to keep up. Like I got him quite low, and we were trading, and it was fairly close. But I didn't have the that big turn to kind of slam the door shut. Um, so that was kind of my first loss in a while because my, my before that I had lost on round three and then I had gone on a tear all the way up to nine and one and then yeah. I was suddenly nine and two. Um, but I mean, I felt okay. Like the deck was still doing good. Sometimes that happens. You just you just don't see your power cards. I think Nia has um, a story related to that as well that he'll probably share. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely something that can happen with the deck. You are kind of like really playing to those those three big cards, three of a kind, Art of War, Rain Razors, and if you don't see them, the, the deck is fine, but but not yeah. nearly as good. Um, then I lost to uh, Kano against Alex it was Alexander Vor on Kano. I actually got paired up into him. I, I just before the match, I, I think I was saying to Nia that, oh, I'm safe. I don't have to play Alexander Vor, <laughs> which is like a little bit scary just because I don't I only have AB1. Like I think I think we can still win, but with, with AB1, it's always a little bit scary. You can get blown up. Yeah. And then of course. Right after I say that, I get paired up into um, Alexander Vore, <laughs> and uh, we're, we're on the feature match, Lexi versus Kano, um, spicy matchup. 
a uh, cool game, definitely worth checking out. Um, yeah, I remember watching this one yeah. at least partially, and I remember walking by and the screen showed like something like twenty eight health to seven, I think, in your favor, something along those lines. I was like, yeah, oh, she got this easy. <laughs> then yeah, I was feeling good. Um, I attacked him for lethal, and I think I started that turn with twenty nine health, mm. and he just had a ridiculous sequence off the top, digging, uh, digging for a tome of aether wind, and then potion of deja vu, and and so on. And it was a really impressive sequence that just completely blew me out of the water and um, and killed me on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, there was like a bit of a judge call there that I know some people have had questions about. Essentially, um, what happened is it was a very complicated turn. He was going through it and he said, oh, um, I think I have a resource floating. And then he said, actually, wait, no, I think it was my tunic counter. And I think mm -hmm. I just knocked my tunic counter off because it was like right next to his tunic. So he picked up the dice and put it on the tunic. And then I kind of went, well, I think I remember using your tunic, but I'm not exactly sure. And I don't know if you had a resource floating. And then I was like, uh, and then we talked about it a bit. And then I was like, you know what? I'd like to call a judge. Yeah. So so I did. And he was he was totally fine with that he said you know that's probably the right thing to do it's it's on camera they can probably look at the footage right um when we talked to the judge the initial call was that they couldn't review the footage or like that's okay. what they told us and and so they tried to reconstruct the turn but if you watched the turn up until then you'd understand it was really hard yeah. because potion of deja vu is involved okay there was <laughs> and then and then he like opted four cards after that and he yeah. opted four cards before the potion so it was just like even very convoluted going backwards through that yeah <laughs> yeah and like somehow he seemed to remember most of the details like he seemed pretty that's confident that's impressive and, yeah, and as he, as he was talking about it, I was like, yeah, that sounds right. And we were like kind of able to piece like more together than okay. I would have thought. Um, but still, I was kind of like, uh, like, I don't know. And then and then the judge is like, do you do? You... So this is the turn. Do you agree? And I'm like, honestly, I'm having trouble even following it. <laughs> like, like I get like parts of it, but it's, it's just like a bit much for me right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so so three of the judges end up reviewing the footage. Uh, they agreed that that was the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, they determined that. Um, he had used his tunic, but he did have one resource floating, and okay. that ultimately he probably just got mixed up. Because what what he had told me was that um, after was that he said, "Yeah, I, I kind of I didn't do the math on how much damage it was, but I remember that I saw that I had exactly enough resources, and I had to play everything and not use Crucible or Metacarpus right. notes." So I think he was just kind of like going through the motions, and then yeah. was like, "Wait, where was my pitch count?" Which is like totally fair. Yeah. Um, so so you were time. you were correct in assessing the tunic was used, right? Because you were like, "Well, I think you." did use it yeah but yeah 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 luckily he had a resource floating from somewhere else yeah it's i think he did uh i think the he had zero resources then he went blue aether wildfire which is two plus storm striders which is one plus another aether wildfire so that's five resources mm. and then a snapback makes six so that would be the two blues and then he played the blazing for for zero which I'm was surprised already you remembered all that. <laughs> well yeah i remember because I, I went i went back and watched it just gotcha. just so yeah. i knew and and it was indeed the right call i was really impressed with the judges actually i think they did an awesome job mm -hmm. Um, that being said, it was, it was actually kind of rough for me. Um, it was almost a 50 minute judge call. I think we started it with about 20 minutes left in the round. And I think it went like 30 minutes past the, when, when oh, the round ended. 50, five, zero. Yeah. Five, zero. Oh, wow. Um, and the whole time, like we both knew that either I was dead or he was dead and it hinged right. entirely on that because he had no cards in hand when I was attacking for lethal. Yeah. So it's like either I'm dead on the spot or he's dead on the spot. And it depends entirely on the judge call. That's insane. There was tons of people like swarming around because it's the feature match and there was a big judge call and everybody was wondering what was happening. Um, so like just the whole thing was really stressful and I felt like kind of emotional and rattled after it. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, I had a bit of time to cool down going into round, I guess would be round 12. Yeah. Um, the judge gave me like a bit of time. It's like, I just kind of need to go to the washroom. He said, you know what, I'll give you like an extra 10 minutes. I'll tell your opponent what happened. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you're back by 45 minutes on the clock, which is really nice. I kind of got to like put, splash some water on my face, eat something, drink yeah. a bit of water and just like chill for a minute and collect myself. Um, so yeah, overall, like despite it being stressful, I think the judges handled it really well. I think they made the right call and, um, yeah, I was actually really impressed with how it was handled. Um, going into round 12, I was definitely like less confident. Um, but um, the the Briar that I ended up playing against, or sorry, I guess that would be round 13. 
the the briar that i ended up playing against um played very very tight uh had some d-reox which i wasn't expecting and uh, yeah. the game was quite <laughs> close but but i felt like i was like pretty consistently ahead and making good decisions despite being like a bit rattled mm -hmm. and um ultimately i ended up um drawing like when I felt like I was getting close to being able to lock him out of the game and force him to block, um, I ended up drawing eight ice cards in a row, so two turns of just ice cards, and mm. and they weren't the attacking kind either. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it just really hurt. Like, I just needed to not whiff there, and I, I think, I don't know for sure if I would have won, but I, I liked my chances, but, but you know, that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. Playing a card game, it happens. Yeah. Um, just unfortunate timing because I did need to win out from there because after the Kano loss I was suddenly nine and three and uh, you needed to x3 in order to top eight so okay. that loss was a bit crushing um, just like yeah. out of contention for top eight after that and off the eight ice cars is like a bit of a a bit of a feels bad a bit disappointing you yeah. know after, after running so hot just these things are just adding up a lot of things are adding up at this point yeah totally and like Overall, thinking back, like I don't feel like I was too tilted. Like I feel pretty good about my decisions. I don't see like major mistakes. Mm -hmm. But um, I also know that like I was definitely like the spring had like the, this. There wasn't the same like spring in my step, so to speak. Yeah. You know, like I wasn't yeah. like I, I was in the mode, and then suddenly I just wasn't after that game. And yeah. that it's hard to quantify how much that matters. I think I understand too, because at that point you knew you were out of top eight, right? Um, so knowing that yeah. it's kind of like you're not really striving for the same goal anymore. Um, if top eight was yeah. your goal all along, right? So it's kind of like your standards have dropped, and now that also affects your play a little bit because you're less motivated, maybe. So. Yeah, I totally understand. Yeah, that. yeah. And then uh, my very last game was uh, actually in the Briar that I ended up losing to and making top eight. Um, actually, I think top four because I believe he he beat a Kano mm -hmm. in quarters. So congrats to him. Like very well played. Mm -hmm. um, then my very last round, I played against another Agro Starvo. It was uh, Gregor Kowalski, who's a well-known MTG pro. Um, the game was not particularly close. I think he ended it with like 30 life. Um, mm -hmm. I think combination of being like pretty bummed out from the last game and like m maybe not making the best choices. Like I don't, I can't see any glaring mistakes, but I also felt like I was just kind of like playing a little bit timid. Mm -hmm. Um, but more than, even more than that, I would say the biggest thing was that I had some very like average turns where I was kind of pushing like eight damage with on hits and he was like very happy to block that because he had like bad hands and he's just like okay block this and like swing the hammer mm. uh which is not great for me and then when i did have my i did have i did draw into the kind of like 25 35 damage turn but whenever i did he had like a spinal or a oaken or yep, a crippling um, <laughs> yeah so it just didn't it just didn't really break my way and and the game wasn't very close but i think that you know had he missed in one or two of those key spots and not have the disruption yeah. and it, it could have been quite different so yeah so yeah i ended uh day two at nine and five i was pretty upset because at this point i thought i was out of top 32 which is what you need to get the pti um but luckily i actually ended up making it on breakers which was like yeah i was actually really excited because i had sort of like conceded that like okay i didn't get there that really right. sucks it was due um, to i guess the losses being so late right yeah, I was the top of the X5s, which was the the one thing that I did figure was that if an X5 makes it, it should be me because mm -hmm. I when when I was nine and one, I think I was at, at table one at the time. Okay. So, yeah. um, it's it's I think at that point it's pretty much impossible for anybody to have stronger breakers than me. So mm -hmm. that that was like the one good thing is that like although I'm X5, I do have really good breakers, and and that ended up making the difference. I think. I came in 30th, and I think um, so. I think three X5s uh, ended right. up in the top 32. So okay. overall, like really happy with the result. Um, yeah. Got the PTI uh, cash. It was 750 USD. So okay. not plane upset at all. Plus, <laughs> yeah, yeah, plane ticket, like some of the hotel. So yeah, yeah. it was a good weekend. Um, That's great. Had a really, really good time. And how'd you spend day yeah. three then? <laughs> Yeah, day three, I just kind of played the Battle Hardened. Mm -hmm. um, I played Ultim, which I'm not... I played it in Skirmish, but I'm not fantastic at that deck. I haven't really been playing Blitz. I think I ended 4-2-1. Um, and one. I had a draw. 
And at that point, I just decided to drop because um, my friend Oliver Fee, um, you can check him out on OKNY podcast, actually came in second at the calling. So right around the time I was, I got my second loss and I had already gotten the draw, um, he was in top eight. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not really feeling this battle hardened. Like it's blitz. I haven't really practiced for blitz. I'm not doing great. Mm -hmm. Um, We had done the PT. I was already pretty tired. And like Oliver was like just crushing it in the calling. So I was like, you know what? I think I just want to go watch Oliver. Like that, that would be more fun to me right now. Mm. Um, And that's what I did. And yeah, he ended up coming in second. So huge congrats to him. Well-deserved. I think he played really well. Definitely. And uh, yeah, after that, we went for dinner and we went to some, korean hot pot or not korean yeah. barbecue sorry we all went and it was uh it was really good that place was awesome it was fun. yeah it was uh yeah. ung's yeah. recommendation i think from uh, yeah. the fab tcg article yeah so yeah props to him Past... for, <laughs> for uh, letting us know where to go it was a great place actually nia's decision yeah. to go so we can we can blame nia <laughs> <laughs> only one yeah, server no, tried really to good. kill me only one but... yeah there was <laughs> there was a bit of an incident there but i'll uh I'll leave that to Nia, Nia can to talk about that. It's, it's yeah. his story. <laughs> All right, Nia. Although I did witness it firsthand in horror. You were right next to him there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So and I know it's... that Nia did not participate in the Pro Tour main event like like me. Uh, he was basically my my buddy all weekend while Eric and Yuki were off doing great things. Uh, so Nia, why don't you talk to, us, uh, talk to us about day two of the PT, I guess day one of the calling. Uh, yeah. Just like came into the event. Felt good about the deck. Didn't feel good about my chances. Was my first big event, kind of. Right, and you did play the same it, deck that Yuki did because you helped her play yeah. test this deck. I think you mentioned like over eighty hours yeah. or so of testing. It was a lot of hours. I, yeah, I you played like every day. Full time job. <laughs> yeah, I, actually more than my full time job, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, deck felt great though. Like round one, I played against uh, Harold Prism. It was mm. really scary because uh, turn one was red war tune into a red enigma chimera. So I was like, chimera. I'll start the game at 25. Like, yep. we'll see how it goes from here. But I kind of just like turned a corner, taxed him enough and just like made him block where I was able to get through. Mm-hmm. Uh, played against a briar in round two. I was actually sitting across from Rob and uh, Rob was uh, <laughs> beating on a, uh, on a katsu like a little too hard I, and then after, was that after turn, he, uh, turn 5 I think I turned 4 and killed him or something he, like, he turned 4 killed him Oaken's he walked final. off yeah he, he was the guy I think I mentioned who literally just like cursed under his breath and just walked away without saying bye or anything <laughs> he was just so upset uh, I apologize like 10 times but what can you it do? was rightfully <laughs> so uh, and then after Rob did that uh, my opponent and I were looking over and I proceeded to flip three rain razors and then an art, uh, three of a kind against my opponent yeah. and then he looked scared and then I proceeded to kill him it was a briar I saw that uh, <laughs> yeah. so Rob finished the game in about 5 minutes I, I was done in about 10 <laughs> You're like, oh, Rob's done already. I gotta speed this up. <laughs> Rain Razor times three. How much? How much damage did you do there? If you remember, uh, I didn't beat your forty-three, but I think it was like something like thirty-eight or something like that. Oh, insane! It was. It was something ridiculous. It was. It was a good gross. one. <laughs> uh, my round three was against Alexi. Uh, came like, I, I at one point he was at twenty-two and I was at seven. I was scared, but I brought it back. Turned the corner. Brought him to two, but I only saw one three of a kind that game, whereas they saw three. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. kind of just got outdrawn a little bit. Really close game. Almost brought it back from 22 to seven. I was, I was feeling good about my odds, but then... Do, do you remember if you saw anything different from their deck build to yours? Like, was there anything... Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. A bunch of stuff. A yeah. bunch, yeah. They, okay. they, <laughs> they sided out Ice Quakes. They had in Polar Blast, stuff like that. Okay. Were they, were they like, more, like, a traditional Ice... ice. Yeah, they were they were they were trying to yeah they were trying to ice as much as they could. Mm. Yeah, and I think that deck might be slightly favored in the matchup just because they have like a little bit more few um, of the mm. fuse arrows and ice arrows. So I think it's like as much as I don't think that I think that deck is overall not as strong. I think it is actually better exactly yeah. there, just Into by the like a little bit. Yeah, yeah, he'll yeah. have more on hits hitting on average than we would. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. So that was your round... first loss of the day, then. So you're two one at this point. Yeah, I was two one. 
Uh, Rob joined me on being two one. Yep, I think all of us in the in the were we all two one? I think Jackie, who was also two one, I think at that point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Gabe was the only one who went three zero at that point. Right, right. Uh, my round four was into a chain. We had a super super close game. Came down to him having like the died of blood debt, just like mm. a few unfortunate banishes. One banish, maybe too many. He didn't have a non attack action because I had to make him. Um, Pitch again, because uh, I fused uh, I fused a chilling ice vein, and then I played mm-hmm. uh the ice quick, and then I and then I went with another chilling ice vein, so he had to uh, discard another card. Nice. Yeah, he had to pitch the blue that was his non-attack action, which was really unfortunate because uh, the yeah. captain's call, but he had to do it. Yep. So yeah, then I played against a. Uh, this was a prior. This was uh, this was the story match. Uh, this is the one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Forty cards into my deck. Uh, no three of a kinds. No rain razors. Still got him to six. At the end of the game, he looked at me. He sighed like a breath of relief. And said, "I don't know how. I, like that was really lucky by me." And like we just talked about it for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, sh- I think I should have had that game, but like. Yeah. I remember we had a little bit of a counseling session with Jackie, you and I. <laughs> Jackie also had a bad game that that time, right? That round, and yeah, I was there like, "Come on, guys, let's be positive." <laughs> this uh, this one really irked me because we needed to, you needed to be X two to day two yeah. in the in the and you were three two at this point, right? Or was it two two? Uh, this this made me this made me uh three two three two and yeah so, so you had to basically win out three more games to make it to day two i, I went through uh, all the stages uh <laughs> stages of grief <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny uh after that i just like uh i went in i played against a reiner the next round we had a really really close game it came down to we were both at one and just like mm. I had to sit there and pray he didn't have the the D react and he didn't have. It. Yeah, just gotta avoid reckless swing for the rest of the game now. <laughs> yeah. Um, then my round seven was against Katsu. Uh, I know how to play against Katsu pretty well because I'm a Katsu main. So yeah, whenever we knowing... mention we have a friend who's a Katsu main on this channel, it's always Nia. Nia is the Katsu main that we refer to. <laughs> yeah, just like. The, the the like I knew where to block and then just like tax effects and like any of the discard effects against him just like cripple the deck. Like if you mm-hmm. have to pitch a blue to mm-hmm. be able to like Kodachi. do your turn, like you can't <laughs> you can't no like to on my turn, like to oh. to do a chilling ice vein, there's just like nothing you do. If I winter's bite him, I one for one, but I heal like five health. Mm. It's it's really, really good. And then my last round of the day, this was round eight. It's a pretty long day. But so here you are 5-2, right? So this is the match yeah. that determines whether you make it or not. Yeah, we all had our winning ins. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob and I both won. We were so happy. Mm-hmm. Rob's match went forever. <laughs> oh, I think we were like five minutes at the time. Starvo versus yeah. Starvo. Just, it was hammer bonk fest until like 13 or 14 health. Then I managed to draw my Oaken first. And then, you know, that's when you win the game. <laughs> Happened to me also in top eight of the calling where we were bonking each other and I was 13 14. He drew his pulse of Volt Haven into Oak and Hold. <laughs> I was like, all right, it's over. But yeah, we were both pretty stoked. I think this is before we went to uh, we went to dinner, I think, together after this, and we were all pretty happy. We were kind of flying a high a little bit on making to day two of the calling, so it was a great time. Yeah, I definitely wanted to have like some showing for the event. Like I had confidence in the deck. Yuki helped with that a lot, and so did Eric because they both day two the the PT. So yeah. like seeing the deck do well like really helped me like feel it's, better. It's about fun the that deck. we all made day two of our events. That's yeah, fun. it was awesome. <laughs> and then uh, on day one, all I did was uh, get some stuff signed. I got my code for Icelanders signed by Steve Argo. Right, you did that before got... the calling, right? So you were able to yeah. do all the tourist stuff. Earlier. Yeah, I got I got these uh the metal tokens. I uh, I can't remember his name, but he yeah. was selling these, and they're so awesome. They're so nice. Yeah, really worth the money. I mean, those are gonna be like in my thing forever. I'm not gonna switch them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I really like them. They're really high quality. Really hefty. Yeah, made of metal. Yeah, they're very hefty. Exactly. Very nice quality. Yeah. So I won out my three matches. I was feeling really confident going into to day two of the calling. So day mm-hmm. three, and then I sat down. I flipped our heroes. It was a Reiner. I'm like, okay. And my opponent was playing Fatigue Reiner. He had 15 defense reactions in his deck. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I punched him to two, but uh, yeah. I I couldn't get through any further. Do you, do you recall how he finished you off? Was it just like uh, you, you? I guess you fatigued at that point. Yeah, I'm just fatigued. Okay. I just I, I think I had no cards left in deck. Okay. I yeah. I almost snuck in a little bit of a win. Uh, Yuki saw this, but uh, I swung with uh, icy encounter and. <laughs> I was able to punch through one damage with an Art of War from my arsenal by giving plus one plus one. Oh, nice, one. yeah. Sneaky but uh, if, if if he had blocked maybe one less, then maybe maybe we get there. But Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you yeah. don't take the hit. I guess, yeah, as Reiner, you kind of avoid the on-hit regardless. Yeah. So. But could have been He greedy. was just playing, yeah, he was just playing, like, super safe. There's, like, a few turns that Nia set up where, like, he, I think he tried to get over with, like, Rain Razors, and then he just had all the T-Reacts for you or something. <laughs> it was, I, uh, I mean, he, he yeah, had... all, all of them. Every yeah. D-React you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, like, what was it? He had uh, two um, it was, uh, springboards also in that deck, right? It was, uh, he had three ofs of Unmovable, Favor Scene, Sync, Reckless Swing, and Springboard Summersault. Yeah. Uh, the one attack I thought I was getting through, he went Sync, Springboard, Springboard, and I went, <laughs> okay. Didn't like, see that again. one coming. <laughs> it's like, all right, if you want it, fine. You, you worked Spring, hard like, enough for it. <laughs> Springboard makes sense in the deck. I just didn't expect the 15 D-Reacts. Like, yep. Springboard yeah. makes sense because it's a D-React that you can pitch to hit with a club. But... I think, like, consequently, if you're playing into a lot of Starvos, you do want all the D-Reacts. And then at the same time now, it's like it's also affecting the Lexi, mirror, or Lexi matchup because D-Reacts really hurt the deck as well. So kind of they go yeah. a long way, those D-Reacts. So I knew I wasn't in contention for top 8 at this point because I lost too early. But I wanted to try to make top uh 32 because mm -hmm. you still you still cashed yep um so i just had to win out mm -hmm. um my next round i played against chain i i don't think i dropped a single game to chain this weekend i think i went yeah four and yeah i went four and oh against them i think that that's expected kind of right like lexi does yeah. play very well into chain yeah. yep it didn't matter play draw i think i got husk every turn too <laughs> it turned two. Two. <laughs> it turned two. my turn too yeah the wow I think every single game feels bad. Maybe except for one, but yeah, for sure. Like Husk turns to like, who? De <laughs> Dex, Dexic. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, round eleven, I played against a Prism. Played. I think. I think I was playing like as well as I've ever played on day two. Like I was just like playing my best. Like yeah, knowing when to hold back, when to push push for more damage. Um. Yeah, and then played against mm -hmm. a chain in round twelve. Uh, Beat ended him that game. Too, in, I bet. Yeah, in twelve minutes. Uh, 12 that one minutes. was my slaughter fest. fest. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was everything that like you want in the chain matchup from the Lexi side is like yeah. what I got. Like I ended every turn with like a sleep third. I always started the turn with like a fused arrow and just like bingo bango. He died. <laughs> bingo bango bongo. <laughs> um. So you're going Round now into the final match, is that right? This is yeah. This is my winning in for. This top is the winning in. Okay. Yes. Um, I played against Prism. He was a really nice guy. He actually like tests with Tyler Horsepool and them. Mm. Um, it's probably good. I, yeah, he was. He played fantastic. <laughs> like we both played fantastically. I think like both of us at the end were just like we talked for like an extra like fifteen minutes after the match, mm. just like talking about the match and like. Yeah. yeah, like, lots of praise for him. Uh, his name is Steven. Really, really nice guy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, turn one, I actually managed to get his uh, Phantasmal footsteps because he blocked with them, and then I lightning pressed mm -hmm. over them, so I managed to punch through and get his boots on turn one. Nice. So I was like, we're in a pretty decent spot. We don't play any poppers, but I'm like, if I have the ever, like, if I ever have the opportunity to pop with a lightning press, like, now's the chance that I can do it. Yep. Um... I flipped up a lightning press somewhere in the middle of the game and just like threatened it for like half the game. So he had to like <laughs> sit there on the block the whole time. <laughs> it's 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 better to not play the card at that point. You keep the intimidation factor going for a while. Yeah, he played super tight. Like he was like after the the first turn, he looked a little frazzled because I broke his boots. But then he like mm -hmm. pulled it back, and then we had like really really good match. And then mm -hmm. at the end, um. He misread his life total from his last game because they were side by side, mm. and he thought that he was at two when he was at one, and he said, "I'll take one." And I was, uh, 
And he's like, okay, I'll go to one. And then you were like, wait, you just killed yourself. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're taking lethal. And we kind of like backtracked. I know I like, I probably shouldn't have let him take it back, but I really didn't want to win. Yeah. By just like a match I shouldn't have won because like I wanted to win through like skill and we both played really well. Right. And right. I respect him a lot. So I let him take it back and he ended up winning off of that. But like, I, I don't yeah, feel bad about it, it at all. It would have been a pretty, I guess, like dissatisfying moment if you had yeah. won at that point after it's like, oh, I'll, okay, I'll just take one. But like, that's lethal. Oh, never mind. Like, I, I guess at that point, you feel really bad kind of just like kind of enforcing that he takes the damage, right? Uh, yeah. Whereas it's you have cool. the right to, you know, because it is a high level tournament. You have the right yeah. to say like, look, you took it. Like, that's game. But yeah uh, i think you made the right choice um you yeah, probably feel no a lot regret. better now that you did make that choice than if you hadn't oh even like five minutes after i didn't feel bad about it i felt it was the right thing to do like yeah he played amazing he was a super nice guy like if he was making like stumbles and like misplays all along the way i probably <laughs> wouldn't have let him take it back because it's like yeah he's yeah. just been making misplays and then that's just like something he did but yeah. he was playing amazing and it was just like one one misstep that like we were both nervous and he was at one i didn't want him to to lose like that yeah he still went through with his play but uh i was one turn cycle like i was one i was one draw away from hitting my second cycle where i stacked a rain razor mm. so i was one like one turn away from being able to punch that was through him, but... pretty much being able to win the game yeah <laughs> yeah he got there so like i'm glad i did it i think i think the match was a, a great match yeah yeah, it's great sportsmanship on your part, I think. Um, I want to believe he would have done the same to you. You know, uh, I think that mm-hmm. it's always better to, like, it, it does suck to lose the game. But uh, yeah. I, I would I would do the same thing. I'd, I'd be in your shoes, I think. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think. I think most of us said that we would do the same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But, and, uh, I mean, either way, I mean, not making top 32, like, it was an 800-person event, right? 800-some people, so... Still went very far. Still did, performed really well on the deck. Uh, I think both of you did. Eric too. I think performed quite quite decently. Um, yeah, even with my X four record, I still ended up fortieth. Uh, so my breakers were actually. Oh, pretty you were good. very close. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if I won, I probably would have ended up in the twenties, like low, like low twenties. Mm-hmm. Maybe even a little higher, but like. But there was no break yeah. for sixteen anyway. It was eight yeah, and no thirty two. It. it was eight and thirty two. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, yeah, and so uh, this was this was the final day of the pro tour. So yeah, you went to top eight. Oh, you didn't go top eight. You did uh, all of your rounds for that that mat that day. I know I left early because I o two scrubbed out because <laughs> I was like, I want to do all the touristy stuff now because I I didn't go see Steve Argyle. I didn't line up for the the signatures. I didn't go see uh, uh, James White either. I wanted to, but he finished the line really early. I think because he had to do all the ceremonies, the the uh, awards for each of the events. Um, but he was there, and it was during my. Uh, my sealed event where it was like crap we have a sealed event in half an hour but james white has a line now to go see him and i really want to get a picture but i missed out on that unfortunately he okay. also chickened out a few times in I'll see. The that is true i mean hey when, when he walks he walks with like a purpose like he, he's he like he walks through and I, i'm not the kind of guy to be like hey like stop him midway and like talk to him i you know i don't want to feel awkward i don't, I don't want him to feel awkward either so he was such a nice guy. Like a like everyone I talked to that talked to him was just mm-hmm. like they had a full on conversation. He was such just so nice to everyone. Oh, I saw. Same him. with Steve Argyle. Oh, Steve Argyle too. He's like Steve Argyle's like, hey, how are you, man? Like, how are you doing? I'm like, wow, that's so nice. <laughs> so nice oh. to engage me like that. Yeah, it oh. wasn't just like, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, one of my friends uh, went to go get a signature, and uh, instead of getting him to pay for the signature, he's like, we are so thirsty. He's like, here's some money. Can you go get us a drink? <laughs> And then my friend went to go get them a drink, and then he like gave them the signatures for free. It was it was really good. He's a chill nice. guy. He's a very chill guy. I think some people just mentioned they were from Canada, and he's like, "Oh, sweet, here, like on me." Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys coming back uh, after the pro tour to talk with us, talk with me. Uh, really, really nice to have you on Nia for the first time. Hopefully, we'll see you again. Fingers crossed. But um, you're a busy guy, so <laughs> hopefully, I can win something so yeah. I can be on. Here. If you win worlds, you're welcome back. But only then. No, I'm kidding. I don't have a PTI. I can't go to world. <laughs> mm. Fair enough. Well, step one. Step, step one. one is PTI, but I'm, I'm a, judging one of the pro quests. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, the the ProQuest don't give uh, actual PTIs. They give uh, only invites to uh, mm. uh, the next Pro Tour. Right, right. You don't have a yeah. world's PTI from winning ProQuest, right? No. No, no, no. You need no. to like top eight a calling or like yeah. a tier three, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, or top thirty-two a PT. I think yeah. that's the only way to get. Well, or I, I guess we one. don't know. We can get one from our friend. Mm. That's true. Yeah. All right, well, let's see if I can do this outro justice without Eric here. I've never done this before. So thank you very much for watching. Please hit that like button and subscribe. And wherever you are in the world, have a good morning, good afternoon, or good night. Bye for now.